So in the previous lesson, we looked at how to find the general solution of a first order linear differential equation using the D operator method. And in this lesson, we are going to consider second order linear differential equations. So for the first example, we are going to solve the differential equation d squared plus 1 in the brackets all times y equals e to the power 2x. So we have the differential equation, which is d squared plus 1 d squared plus 1 all times y equals e to the power 2x. Now the first thing we need to do is to find the complementary function. That is the general solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. So we generate the auxiliary equation. That is we have m squared plus 1 equals 0 and then we transpose we transpose 1 to the right hand side we have negative 1 and then we take the square root of both sides so that we have m equals plus or minus i now comparing that to alpha plus or minus i beta you realize that we have alpha equals 0 and then we have beta equals the coefficient of i which is 1 therefore we have the complementary function yc equals e to the power alpha times x into bracket c1 cos beta x plus c2 sine beta x so we plug in the values of alpha and then beta alpha is 0 0 times x is 0 e to the power 0 is 1 so we have 1 times c1 cos 1 times x is x so c1 cos x plus c2 sine x so this is the complementary function now let's try to find the particular integral so for the particular integral we have we have g of x the function on the right hand side to be equal to e to the power 2x now this is an exponential function so we have the particular solution or the particular integral yp equals 1 over f of d times e to the power ax now if j of x is an exponential function then basically you are going to substitute or you are going to plug in the value of a in here into the polynomial function of the d operator so you have 1 over f of a times e to the power ax notice that this is valid so long as f of a is not equal to 0 so comparing this to that you realize that we have the value of a to be 2 therefore we have yp equals 1 over now f of d is what we have as d square plus 1 so we plug in a equals 2 so that we have 2 square plus 1 times e to the power 2x so this becomes 1 over 5 times e to the power 2x this is called the particular integral therefore we have the general solution giving us yc plus yp and that is equal to we have c1 cos x plus c2 sine x plus 1 over 5 e to the power 2x now let's try example 2 so we have d into bracket d minus 1 all times y equals 5 so let's try to solve this so we have d into bracket d minus 1 all times y equals 5 so for this we have to generate the auxiliary equation so we have m into bracket m minus 1 equals 0 and this is m1 equals 0 and then we have m2 equals we transpose negative 1 to the right hand side so that we have 1 therefore we have the complementary function equals c1 e to the power 0 times x plus c2 e to the power x so 1 times x is x therefore we have yc yc to be equal to e to the power 0 is 1 so 1 times c1 is c1 so we have c1 plus c2 e to the power x this is the complementary function now for the particular integral 
we have g of x to be equal to 5. Now, this is a constant or better still a polynomial where the value of x has a degree of 0. So x to the power 0 is 1 and then 1 times 5 is 5. Now, so long as we have a polynomial, then we have yp equals 1 over f of d and then times the function on the right hand side. And then because we have a polynomial, we should be thinking of either of the two expansions. So we can either have 1 over 1 minus d, which is equal to 1 plus d plus d squared plus d cubed and so on and so forth. Or better still, 1 over 1 plus d equals 1 minus d plus d squared minus d cubed and so on and so forth. Now, we can express this as 1 over, now f of d is giving us d into bracket d minus 1. So we have d on the outside and then d minus 1 and then times 5. Now, we want to make sure that 1 is positive. We want to make sure that 1 is positive. So we are going to multiply top and bottom by negative 1. So when we do that, then we have negative 5 divided by d into brackets. This negative affects the d here. So we have negative d and then it affects this and then we have positive 1. Now we can interchange the positions so that we have 1 minus d. So the next thing we are going to do, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to have negative 1 over d, negative 1 over d, and then we try to input the expansion 1 over d minus 1. Now, you realize that here we have a constant, okay? So we are going to focus on only the first value because here the exponent on x is 0. That is why we have x to the power 0 equals 1 and then 1 times 5 is 5. Now, if we had 5x, then we focus on the two values because this time you have the exponent on x to be 1. Yes, so usually that is how it is done. So we focus on all the constants, which is 1, and then we have the function 5. So we are going to have negative, or better still, we have 1 over d, 1 over d times negative 5. Now, in the first lesson on d operators with regards to first order linear differential equations, we said that if you have 1 over d of a function f of x, then basically that is equal to the integral of the function f of x with respect to x. So in that same case, we are going to have this to be the integral of negative 5 dx, and that is simply negative 5x, negative 5x. So that is yp. Notice that we ignore the constant of integration. So we have negative 5x. Therefore, we have the general solution, which is y equals yc plus yp. We have yc to be c1 plus c2 e to the power x minus 5x. Now let's move on as we solve the third example. Now let's solve example 3. So we have d squared plus 9 all times y equals sine 2x. So first we have the auxiliary equation giving us m squared plus 9 equals 0. We have m squared equals negative 9. We take the square root of both sides and then this can be simplified as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. So we have m equals plus or minus i times 3. So this is plus or minus 3i. So we have this to be equal to alpha plus or minus i beta. And then you realize that we have alpha to be 0. And then we have beta to be 3. Therefore, we have the complementary function equal to e to the power 0 times x. So that is 0 and then e to the power 0 is 1. So we have 1 times c1 
c1 cos 3x plus c2 sine 3x this is the complementary function now for the particular integral we have g of x giving us sine of 2x now the moment we have either a sine or a cosine function let's say in the form in the form sine ax plus b or cos ax plus b then you know we are going to input or we are going to put such like the square equals negative a square the cube equals d d square which is equal to d negative a square and so on and so forth now we have the coefficient of x here to be 2 therefore we have the value of a to be 2 so we are going to have yp equals 1 over now we have f of d f of d here to be d square plus 9 so we have d square plus 9 and then times sine 2x so this is equal to we have 1 over now the square is equal to the square is equal to negative a square now we have negative sorry we have a we have a to be 2 so that is negative 2 square and that is equal to negative 4 we have a we have d square to be negative 4 so we are going to have negative 4 plus 9 times sine 2x and that is equal to 1 over 5 times sine 2x so we have yp to be equal to 1 over 5 sine 2x so that is the particular integral therefore we have the general solution y giving us c1 cos 3x plus c2 sine 3x plus 1 over 5 sine 2x now to the last example let's try to solve this differential equation as well so first of all we generate the auxiliary equation that is we have m square plus 2m plus 1 equals 0 now we have the coefficient of m square to be 1 coefficient of constant term also to be 1 so we want two values that when you multiply you have 1 when you add you have 2 that is 1 and then 1 so this is going to be m plus 1 m plus 1 equals 0 so we have m1 equals m2 and that is equal to negative 1 therefore we have yc to be equal to c1 e to the power negative x plus c2 x e to the power negative x this is the complementary function now let's try to find the particular integral now with the particular integral this time we have the product of two functions we have g of x to be equal to e to the power ax times any other function let's call that v of x so that is you have e to the power negative x times cos x now so long as you have the product of functions in this form that is e to the power ax times v of x then we have the particular solution yp equals 1 over f of d so f of d times e to the power ax v of x so that will be equal to you are going to shift e to the power ax on the left and then you have times 1 over f of instead of f of d you have f of d plus a and then times v of of x v of x so here we have a comparing these two functions that is e to the power ax and then e to the power negative x so e to the power ax and then e to the power negative x you have the coefficient of 
x here to be negative 1. So a is equal to negative 1. And then you have d plus a to be d minus 1. Therefore, we are going to have yp equals, we have e to the power ax, so e to the power negative x times we have 1 over f of d plus a. So we are going to substitute d minus 1 in place of d in here. So we are going to have d minus 1 all square plus 2 into bracket d minus 1 plus 1 times v of x which is cos x so this becomes e to the power negative x over here we have d square minus 2d plus 1 and then plus 2d minus 2 plus 1 times cos x now we have this equals here we have plus 1 plus 1 which is 2 and then minus 2 so they cancel out we have negative 2d and then plus 2d they also cancel out so we have e to the power negative x times 1 over d square of cos x so how do we simplify this now this is equal to e to the power negative x and then we have this is 1 over d square so you can express this as 1 over d times 1 over d of cos x so this means that you are going to integrate the function cos x you are going to integrate the function cos x so we are going to have yp we are going to have yp equals equals e to the power negative x then into bracket we have 1 over d and then times the integral of cos x dx so that becomes e to the power negative x and then you have 1 over d of now when you integrate cos x you have sine x so sine x and then it means that you are going to also integrate sine x so you have e to the power negative x times the integral of sine x dx now if you integrate sine x then you have negative cos x so this becomes negative e to the power negative x cos x so that is yp therefore we have the general solution y to be equal to we have yc to be c1 e to the power negative x plus c2 times x times e to the power negative x. So c1 e to the power negative x plus c2 x e to the power negative x minus e to the power negative x cos x.